Hey everybody, welcome to the new channel. Hi, if you have found me here and just stumbled across this video, then hey. If you've come over from Soulful Revolution from my tarot channel over here, hey. <laughs> so I'm excited to start this new channel. This new channel is all about tools. We've been talking for two years on my other channel, Soulful Revolution, about um, tarot and not talking about tarot, but we've been using tarot as a methodology of <clears throat> laying a path, right? How do I move down my life? How do I move through my life? And a lot of people have been uh, coming to that channel. Thank you for that. A lot of folks have been coming to that channel for that purpose, okay? And that tarot is the tool that we've been using. So now that we know <laughs> what's going on, okay? I do dailies over there, I do monthlies over there, I do all kinds of stuff over there related to the tarot. Now let's talk about um, tools that you can employ that will help you manifest, that will help you bring in all kinds of abundance, abundance in all kinds, right? Whether it's love or financial abundance or time or spiritual abundance or your work or whatever that's what we're here to do we're here to talk about those things actually taking action moving toward those things and what I have found in all my travels I have now um, counseled and worked with hundreds of people mostly in the twin flame journey but not exclusively to that a lot of people who are on a spiritual path who sort of push back on that title of Twin Flame, which I definitely have done because I feel like it keeps people trapped in a paradigm that's an old paradigm that's not even true for that journey. So as the first video on this new channel, I am going to share my own story and that's why this is titled what it's titled, okay? Which is how to let go of your Twin Flame. And I know that might shock you a little bit that I'm saying that, but what I have learned, and I'll talk about it through this video, what I have learned is that yes, this person is here to wake you up. Yes, there's lots of bullshit and triggering that go along with that. Yes, it can be debilitating, awful, everything, but the reflection is a lot about victim mentality. So I am here now, my job is to help people transform their lives and go in the direction of their dreams. And one of those things is removing old belief systems, removing things that keep you stuck in that. And if Twin Flame is keeping you stuck, then it's time to remove that. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't mean that you're not going to have a um, relationship in your life. Okay, I think people feel like they're confused about manifesting. So that's why we're going to iron that out in this channel over the course of the next however long. Okay, um, that's what this channel is dedicated to. So let me share with you just a little bit of my story so you know where I'm coming from. If you're brand new to this channel, hi, my name is Mary Jo. Hello. <laughs> thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing all of those things. Because this is about building community for me and it is about helping people go in the direction of their dreams, right? How does that, what does that look like? Probably a little more allowing, a little more spiritual than you might think. So my story is uh, in 2008, here comes Ellie, Ellie the kitty cat. Every time I'm talking about this, she shows up. She's a guide. Um, <clears throat> so in 2008 in Maine, um, I am married, I am a, a client services director, senior director, whatever, I forget whatever the title was, for um, a large marketing agency. I have a cute little house in Maine. Um, I have a husband who's a lovely human being, right? Looks good from the outside, looks great, okay? Um, so in the course of 2008, I first, um, probably one thing you should know, put a pin in this, is that in 1997, before I met my husband, my then husband, I started to learn tarot. I started to learn astrology. I had always been a fan of astrology and numerology ever since I was a kid. I was always interested in that. Um, tarot showed up in my life in 1997. I had a lovely teacher, wonderful teacher. She also lives here in Maine. And all through that 
time, all through that 10 years of being married and everything, I was working with it, right? I was working with that. I was, you know, sort of trying to see my way outside of my own little box that I had created for myself. And admittedly, a nice looking box. <laughs> and so in 2008, I had uh, a friend of mine who talked, who did a lot of uh, work around astrology and numerology. She was really, really cool. It's still really cool. And <clears throat> we started to sort of unravel some things like, you know, I wasn't happy in what I was doing. I felt like a fake. I felt like I was in this path, in that path, and it wasn't real for me. And I was like, how can this not be real for me? This is what this is what I think I'm supposed to be doing. And she was like, aha, this is what you think you're supposed to be doing? Who told you that? And so we started to unravel some of that stuff. And in the course of that, I realized that none of it was helping me grow. It was just something that I could do, right? Previously, I had been in media for, before I moved over to marketing, I had been in media for quite a long time. And that was <clears throat> a, a great experience for me and also a negative experience for me. I, I got out of media because I told a joke one day and it was a really dark joke and everybody looked at me and they were like, you might need to take a break. Because when you deal with a lot of negative things that can seep in. So I did, I took a break and I went off to do something that was a little bit lighter and it was. So as I unraveled things in 2008, I gradually realized that I was... I had built a life that was about somebody else's life. This is what I thought it was supposed to look like. This is what I thought, <clears throat> excuse me. This is, I'm telling my truth and so my fifth chakra is gonna act up, just saying. Um, I, this is what I thought it's supposed to look like. And here's the thing, like outside, physically, the things I like, the things that make me comfortable and stuff like that haven't changed that much, but how I look at it, how I have moved through my life, how I am with other people has changed a lot. So in the summer of 2008, things started to unravel. Okay, this is what happens. This, it was a slow moving train, but it seemed like fast to me because I was on the train <laughs> and I was not driving the train, but the train had tracks and the train was going somewhere. Okay. And the you know what happened in 2008 in the united states here comes ellie um come here you in 2008 in america the banks nearly fell off a cliff this is ellie hi hi the banks nearly fell off a cliff and what happened in the marketing industry is overnight the agency i was working for went from 450 employees to 30. right overnight and that be thus begun my belief around outsourcing my money right I'm outsourcing my money to people who will hack me off without a second thought and it's nothing personal right this is business this is what they needed to do but for me <laughs> it is personal because I got to pay my mortgage and I got to do my stuff so that was one thing right put a pin in that it was just about that whole idea of outsourcing my um, financial well-being also outsourcing my happiness to other things outside of me. I was noticing I was doing that. So at the time that that was unraveling, the marriage was also unraveling because it was not truly in who I am, in who I uh, am here to be. Here you go. And I remember watching a Red Sox game uh, with my husband and a neighbor who came over like every freaking night <laughs> for dinner <laughs> for five years. And then they would stay and watch the game and I would go up to bed around three o'clock or something like that. Stop it. You're, you're just being a pest right now. And <clears throat> I was laying in bed, it was like nine o'clock and I was like, I, yeah, I could do this for the rest of my life. And my brain went, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> so I remember that moment of like, the thing that was inside the box and then the true self out here going, are you out of your mind? Okay. So thus began the process of 
unraveling that marriage. And I'm going to move this. Seriously, she's really. <laughs> and so as that unraveled, I left. I took my dog, Stella, who was a wonderful girl who passed away in um, 2015, December. And I left. And within a couple of months of sort of detoxing from that whole thing, I met um, I reconnected with my twin. Now, in 1997, remember I said 1997 is when I started learning tarot. 1997 was also when I met my twin. The person, the personage of the energy of the twin, okay? And I met him. And then, fast forward to 2008, um, a friend of mine said, hey, you know who's getting divorced also right now? Who got married at the same month you did and they're getting divorced in the same month you are? We'll call him Michael. And I was like, oh, okay, because we always had a great rapport. He was getting married, I was getting married at the same time. So there was really this like, I'm happy to be on my path, but that's really weird that I'm having this connection with you, right? Because I'm ha at the time you're getting married, you're like kind of like super duper happy about it. Most people are. And um, <laughs> not everybody, most people. And so I did, I reconnected with him. I joined Facebook for the first time, like a lot of people my age in 2008. And I reached out and I found him. He was my first friend on Facebook. And I was like, oh my God. So we had a great time talking, whatever. And um, we started dating. And one of our first dates, this was probably a couple of dates in. This was not the first date. This was a couple of dates in. <coughs> and, um, took me to the beach. This is August. And took, see how fast this is unraveling. The, the layoff happened in summer, early summer. It's August now, end of August. And he, he took me to the beach right before Labor Day, I think. And we sat on a beach for eight hours and told each other our stories. Just told stories back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it was a very um, intimate experience to be able to share a lot of the things that I've been holding in for the past 10 years. So all of that happened and <clears throat> lots of intimacy followed that, which were explosively passionate and beyond whatever I ever experienced previously. You want this plant, don't you? And <laughs> so I just was like, oh, this is it. This is my person. This is my soulmate. And within four weeks, so we had like four weeks of that experience. And then one day, end of, end of September, we were supposed to just, you know, go to dinner or something. It wasn't any big deal. It was not like a... And <clears throat> I'm not a tremendously like... Uh, I don't do a lot of like lovey-dovey stuff. I like to have fun. I like that, you know, so I was like, I don't understand. So anyway, he's here to pick me up for dinner and he's like, come here. I want to, I want to ask you a question. And so we sat down and he said, are you feeling? And then he stopped and he said, I can't do this anymore. I was like, what? In, literally in one second, I thought he was going to say, I love you. And then the next second, he was like, I'm done here. So I remember it was actually definitely feeling like I got punched in the gut. It was a visceral, it was a physical, ugh, right? I don't even think I said anything after that. No, I did. I, I asked, I said, um back up for a second when you said are you feeling what did you want to say and he was like he's like no I can't I can't go there and he said look he said let's talk in a couple of days and he got up and he left he was there 10 minutes 10 minutes <laughs> devastated absolutely leveled okay so for the next couple of days, 
I was in a vortex. I was in not a not a good one. <laughs> not the not the Abraham Hicks vortex. It was a void. No, it's not a vortex. It was a void. I was in a void. And the divorce had become final. I had sold the house back to Michael. So he had the house and I had the money that my mother had had um, left me when she passed away. And so I didn't I wasn't really working cuz everything was sort of collapsing, right? So I wasn't really working. I was just being, just being. And I was that way until December. He never reached out again to talk. I tried. I tried. And he blocked me. Boom, 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 boom. Every single way. And I found myself driving in a car down to see him. Because I was like, I have to see you. I have to get an under... It was a mental under... I need an understanding of why you, you did what you did. But there was also this like tremendous um connection there was the heart chakra awakening there was the kundalini there was all of that stuff and then bam the door just closed and i was in a void i was literally in like a um, a chamber where they take away all of your senses this deprivation chamber and <clears throat> i was in a car driving down to see him and about 10 minutes before I got to his house, I pulled over and I was like, nope. Mm -mm. He's pushing back so hard on you seeing him. Do not do this. Okay, do not do this. You're going to regret this. So, <laughs> there's a dragonfly in here now. <laughs> oh my God. So, I stopped myself and at the end of December, when everything was final with the house and with the divorce and everything, I had just been living with a friend and, you know, in a, a room in her house and she had rented that to me. And I said, I gotta go. I gotta get out of here. Cause I feel, I felt stuck in that vortex of the energy. So I left and I went back to where I grew up in Connecticut and my best friend of 50 years lives there. And we had, you know, um, a lovely time sort of unfolding. And then I, met up with a narcissistic partner and that was a disaster and then i left in the last three years that's when this channel started that's when the the uh the heart chakra became more connected that's when i had everything just sort of fall into place and one of the things that happened that was so interesting was um i kept trying to go back to my old career i you know had my own marketing agency i had a place i had a, a an agency with a partner where we booked guests on cnn and everything because you know i used to work for Good Morning America and NBC. And <clears throat> it just wanted to go. It just was not for me. This was not what I was supposed to be doing. And it literally almost took me over the brink into a bankruptcy, which was the most terrifying thing to me because um, I did not want to have that. I did not want to do that. And I didn't think that that was part of the deal. I felt like it was just, I'm pushing down a road that's not for me. And so the money keeps getting drained and the money keeps getting drained, the money keeps getting drained. And that's true. That's exactly, you know, that's exactly true. When we talk about North Node on the other channel um, and we do workshops, it is about where, where do you need to go with your work in this life? Not just your work, but like what is going to be expansive for you? And this truly is my work. It's about teaching. It's about uh, being, um, it is about being a teacher. Okay. And whatever tools we're using, however that works is fine. Mostly spiritual teaching. Cause I have taught a lot of people about marketing. I have taught a lot of people about other stuff. And whenever I do that, it's great. So that whole scary thing about the money, um, I found myself a really wonderful attorney, Kara, who, um, was very nonplussed by the whole thing. Unlike my family who was like, ah, right. But my, my, but Kara was more, Hey, I'll take care of this stuff. You take care of that stuff. It's all going to be good for the next three months. Just pay your rent, pay your, pay the bills. You need to keep everything moving, your health insurance and stuff. And um, I'll take care of all this other stuff, you know, business, business stuff and everything. And it just freed me because I was literally getting to the place where I could not call another client. I could not do the work. I was literally ground to a halt like a car without an oil change. I was like, Ugh. 
So when I did that, when I just let it go, when I was like freed, I was freed of it. I felt like, okay, what do, what do I want to do that's just going to be fun? And the last job I had was I was doing video. Uh, I was doing a lot of video marketing. Um, obviously, I had a bunch of crews, video crews and stuff, and I would go to clients and I would get them on camera talking and I would get them talking and they trusted me. So when I was asking them questions, they were looking at me and they could open up. And that was a very important gift I have to help clients open up on camera because not everybody can do it. And I went to Dallas to do a workshop or to do a, a conference. I did video for like six companies at once. I was like, so exhausted. It just drained me. Okay, that's how you know something's not for you if it really drains you. You also need to learn to protect your energy, which we will talk about on this channel. So draining, draining, draining. <clears throat> I'm in Dallas airport zooming around on YouTube and I see this guy doing tarot. And it brings back to mind 1997 and the astrology and the tarot and everything. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. Looks fun. It's something I love to do, and every time I do a reading for people, they're always like, wow, that was great. So I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how it could work on YouTube, so I learned it just by watching and experiencing what these other people were doing. And thank you to all of the great YouTubers, <laughs> because I learned from you. I learned from you, so thank you for that. So now, the expansiveness of this allowed me to let go of all the other stuff I was doing, allowed me to let go of... First, first and foremost, it allowed me to let go of the identity I had created that was truly not me. I don't look all that different. I don't, I am, I didn't go into the, <clears throat> into an incredibly different visual of me, but it was the core of me that now needed to come out. And spirituality and being on this spiritual path and doing this work of a teacher is the thing. Ta-da! Found it. Da -da -da. And I was, um, the, t the channel expanded a lot, fast, really fast. In 2018, in 2019, I am reaching more and more people. Social media and other stuff is expanding things. It's all good. So my point in telling you all this, first of all, I wanted to share that story. And thank you for listening. <laughs> I appreciate it because I think there's some stuff in there that could help other people. And one of the things that I want to share with you about letting go is it's really about your belief system. That's why you're stuck in this twin flame. Um, it's got to be that one person. I've done a video on the other channel about twin flame is not a person. It's an energy that shift in awareness. <clears throat> Let's people release from narcissistic partners. Oh, it's my twin flame, though. I got to stay. It's really unhealthy and it's really a bad situation, but it's my twin flame. No, no, you don't. One of the things, I, the first thing I want to say to you is if you're in this journey, if you're in a twin flame, what you're labeling a twin flame journey, and it's keeping you in a place that feels heavy. And you're searching around the internet, you're searching around YouTube for help about what is this, you know, you stumble upon some, t you know, you, maybe you stumble upon me and the other channel, maybe you stumble upon a lot of people, Mel, Gold Ray Twin Flames, a shout out to Mel, love Mel. Um, and there's, you know, lots of information out there. What I have learned, I'm expressing to you what I have learned, my own experience, my own um, expression of the Twin Flame journey, my own particular thing 10 years on now okay 10 years on I see a lot from the experience when I was inside the void inside this spinning tornado like it's hard to kind of see you know what you need to see so my number one recommendation to you is meditation slash mindfulness okay if you haven't heard of Eckhart Tolle I'm going to recommend him to you um, Eckhart Tolle is a teacher and his book, The Power of Now, changed my life. It's all about being in the moment. Being in the moment brings power. Okay. So basically 
when your brain is thinking about past and future, then you're not here. You're not present. And when you're in your body, when you're in your spiritual connection, when you're, which is meditation, when you're in your um, this moment only, it grounds you. Okay, you're going to find some stuff that grounds you, your own particular thing. But as a pathway to get there, I'm going to share that mindfulness and meditation are two fabulous ways. And some of you may be like, hey, I can't meditate, my brain, ADHD, all of that stuff. So mindfulness is a good way. I'm going to recommend that book to you. There's lots of cool apps to help you be mindful. Okay, so there's lots of stuff out there. Also, the meditation thing, I like to stare at a candle. That works for me. Closing my eyes doesn't always work for me. And mostly because my, you know, when I'm in this expansiveness about doing this work and everything, what happens is whoosh, I get a rush of new ideas and things. And that's all great. I'm not shutting that off. Don't shut that off. But sometimes mindfulness is better for me because it is not about the past or the future. It's not about to-do lists. It's not about any of that stuff. It is about being in the moment only, okay? So there is, let's see, one, some of the things, I just wanted to go through, I have a little list here of some of the things that keep people stuck and maybe you'll see yourself in here and maybe this will help you to understand that it's a mindset that you're keeping stuck in, you're stuck. There, here's number one mindset that keeps you stuck. There is no one else for me. This twin flame is the ultimate love relationship and I, can't leave it because that's what I really want in my life. So why am I not going toward that? That's what I should be doing. There's a lot to unpack there. First of all, when you get into, when you experience a twin flame connection, let's just call it high vibration. Let's just call it a spiritual awakening. <clears throat> let's call it opening up. Let's call it, you know, heart chakra awakening, Kundalini rising. Let's call it all of that experience. When you experience that, these lower chakras all get fused together. You don't have to go back and do the work of that. All right. So if you're going back to do the work of root chakra, how come money's not flowing? How come abundance in all ways isn't flowing? Whatever. Then you're sort of resisting twin flame journey or you're resisting the spiritual path because you're going back down to do stuff that's already fused together. If you start to align, if you feel like, oh, I've got to do root chakra stuff, it's resistance. Because part of the spiritual journey, the reason for the spiritual journey is to move forward, is to get in a new path of new paradigms, new things, opening up new templates, stuff like that. And by going back, especially looking to the past, especially, you know, things that happened in the past, right? Dwelling on that stuff, dwelly, right? That's resistance. That's all resistance. That's where mindfulness and meditation can help keep you out of that. So... If you if you are this is the one thing I'm here to do in this life is to be in a be in a 3d relationship with this person I want to get married and have dogs and kids and cars and boats and all that stuff you're missing the point because that's not what that person is here for there are people who are married to their twin flames but here's the here's the paradigm shifting idea and I did a video on this a long time ago not a long time ago, a couple months ago Twin flame is not a person, it's an energy, okay? So my own twin flame experience, that person was unable to uh, be with me in relationship, a 3D relationship for his own reasons, okay? A lot of times that twin flame is very unconscious until they're not, okay? You have done some opening of them too. If you don't think you have, you have, all right? But... If your focus is on a 3D relationship, you're gonna get stuck. Because that's not the reason you're here to open up. That's not the reason. You're here to inspire other people. You're here to be a teacher. You're an empath, all of this stuff. You're one of the first uh, of the latest wave of people waking up to all of this. So let, the reason I'm saying letting go of Twin Flame is I'm le letting go of your belief system around what Twin Flame is, is a big part of letting go of this whole thing. If you have, you know, 
you can come across people in the energy of that with you who have problems with narcissism, addictions, all of this kind of stuff. Okay? But when you open up to the twin flame journey, when you open up to the spiritual path, what is happening is you're getting a new template imprinted on you. So whether you're an original twin flame or not, I find that to be very elitist when we talk about that. And I feel like the original twin flames really have done the work of bringing forth a template for everyone to be able to access because everyone on this planet is going to access this level of awakening. You guys just were drawn to it because you're looking for this level of relationship. That's why you're drawn to a spiritual awakening because... I liken it to God's bait. I think this is the way that that the universe said, "Hey, what's the thing that people may really want that are going that is going to bring them down this path?" Now, if we told them, "Hey, come be on a spiritual path," a lot of these people would be like, "Are you out of your mind? I don't even know what that is." But if you're drawn into this relationship that opens you up, that's expansive, that you feel what is possible then you're like, yes, I want to walk this path. It's like person who's a vegan, right? If they go around saying, be a vegan, be a vegan, be a vegan, everyone's like, ew, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but if this person lives a lifestyle and they look good, they feel good, they're open, they're, you know, other people will say to them, what are you doing that makes you, that look at you, look at how different you are, look at how like open you are, look at how amazing you look or whatever it is they will be inspired by that. So it's not about pushing ideas on people. It's about inspiring people to be their best self, to be walk on path, walk on this spiritual path, to walk down this road, to open up to ideas that are beyond what we see, feel, touch, taste, okay? Beyond that. Because what we're doing is we're imprinting a new template. Okay? We are opening up to a new way of being in relationship. And a lot of it is not going to be 3D because that's not where it's at. This is the matrix, okay? This is, you've heard a lot of teachers on YouTube talk about this. This is not, this is a, a expression. This is an expression. So if you're stuck in the idea that twin flame has got to be this person and we're going to get married and we're going to do this the way the 20th century, that template, I, I encourage you to let go or work on letting go of what it was because it's so limiting. Keeps you small, right? People get smaller. And the new thing, bigger. Okay? So being open to that, being open to the idea, and then being open to the idea that Twin Flame is not a person, it's an energy. Because, all right, so there's this movie, um, what was that movie? John Goodman, Denzel Washington, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a really cool premise that evil, this is, and what I'm talking about is the opposite premise because duality, evil, good, you know, all that stuff is eradicated in this new, new way of being. But in this movie, the premise was that evil or the devil or whatever, whatever, you know, 20th century paradigm you want to put on it was an energy. And it jumped from person to person through touch. And so whatever the, the devil wanted to do, whatever the energy wanted to do, wanted to accomplish, it would find a host. And it would infiltrate that host. And then it would push this, this, this tool, right, to perform acts in this 3D. And then the energy would leave it. And the people would be like, oh, my God, what did I just do? Right? It was like a serial killer energy that had you know, transcended and all this. There was a lot about that spiritually incorrect, but the premise was that it went from person to person. And so at the end, Denzel understood that it was an energy, that it needed a, a human host. And he brought it, he brought the person, John, I think it was John Goodman, that was embodied with it, who was like a, a very good friend of his, another cop and all this kind of stuff. And he embodied, he was embodying this energy brought him out to like a cabin in the woods where there was no humans around for miles and knew that if he killed that guy, it, the host would jump into him 
and then he would have to die in order for it to die. That was the premise. So it's very, you know, bleh. but it found a cat. <laughs> it jumped into the cat. So it's like it lives on, right? And the idea of twin flame energy being simply an energy and not a person helps you release you know, people and all of the 3D programming that goes along with, I'm outsourcing my happiness to you because all, all you need is really what's in here. You don't really need another person. Another person can't make you happy. It doesn't work like that. Okay. You, th they can enhance your life. Okay. But you're happy all on your own. You don't need this other person and you don't need them. You want them in your life. They enhance your life and all of that good stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. But the idea that you need this other person, and with Twin Flame, I feel like it gets expanded on. I feel like it be, almost becomes victim mentality. That if I, I can't leave, you know, I'm stuck here with this person, even though it's really difficult because they don't really want to be here either, or they've run away, or they've gotten married to somebody else, or something like that. If you stay in that victim mentality that I have to stay because it's a Twin Flame and I, you know, I can't move on, really the belief system it, that's holding you there is... I will never have another love like this in my life. And so I'm willing to put up with all this bullshit because of that belief that there's only one, that this is the one, 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 one. What I have learned is twin flame is an energy, not a person. And so what that means is people can access that template and you can have that high vibration love. Okay. So, I ha in the course of me doing readings for the last, I don't know, at least two years, um, I've come across a, quite a number of people who've had experiences with the same twin flame intensity for same sex, for other women, um, straight, you know, they're straight, they're married or whatever, and they don't understand why they're having this. And it has always been confusing to me too. And I'm like, what is this talking? What does this mean? I don't understand it. What this means to me is it's a breakthrough to help all of us understand that it's truly about a heart connection and that we're going to have these connections with a lot of people. Eventually, we're all going to see that this is how we're connected through this heart. The heart chakra awakening, opening, is the thing that is really the connective experience. Okay? So, they're having this heart chakra awakening. They're being triggered by a person. There's some reason that that person is triggering them or, or they're having this awakening with them. It's individual to each journey. But, once you have it, Okay, once you have this opening, once you have this experience, you can have it again. There's going to be other people. So if you're staying in an unhealthy situation because, well, it's my twin flame, there's nothing I can really do about it, or stuck and not having anybody in your life, like, I'm never going to have another relationship because that was my twin flame and that's how this has got to work. What I'm here to tell you is that's a waste of time. Because you are going to have that. You are going to be in that experience because you are in now, you are templated with this twin flame energy, with this high level of expression. And other people can, atta can attach. Mm, that's something we got to talk about. Other people can connect to it. Attachment is the energy of I have no power. Okay, I am powerless to do anything to fix this or change this because it's God's will or because it's a twin flame journey, whatever. I say nuts to that. That's ridiculous. Okay, that's more like you're keeping yourself stuck because, well, you know, it's God's will. No. We have now moved into a time where we no longer need the go-between between you and God. You're able to access that relationship all on your own. Don't need a priest. Don't need a minister. Don't need any of that stuff. That was a very um, interesting way of keeping people small. Okay? It did provide community. There was it not 100% negative to it at all. But people stay stuck in that. People stay stuck in that.
okay because they're also thinking that out it's out there it's really you okay it's you so i want to just to let you know some of these things as we move into this new channel as we're talking about these things letting go of these things you know there's a lot of things you can do there's a lot of little rituals and a lot of little things to let go and everything my belief is that belief systems are the things that can unnecessarily keep us stuck in situations that have outlived their purpose there was a reason i came across michael in 2008 there was a reason for these last 10 years and now i'm start, starting to see it all how it all works together all right so welcome to the new channel souls on fire and we're going to do a lot of tool videos to you know tools to help you um way, ways of shifting out of old belief systems that might be keeping you stuck um, we're going to talk about a lot more about astrology. We're going to talk a lot more about numerology. North Node stuff is really my thing um, because that's what you're here to learn in this life. So let's go right at it, okay? Um, so thank you for joining the channel. Thank you for um, being part of this new adventure, expansion, expanding adventure. If you just found me, head over to Soulful Revolution, and I do a lot of tarot over there, so... Thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of this. Thank you for being part of this community. And have a wonderful day. If you found this video, thank you. Have a wonderful day.